React Native local notifications and scheduled notifications are what we'll be looking at in this video. I'm going to show you a module by Zora, which essentially does React Native push notifications, and it works for both iOS and Android. We'll take a look at installing it and setting it up with the iOS and Android dependencies, as well as making sure that all the modules are installed. After that, we'll test it out in a real world application and have a look at the syntax on how to create a local notification and a scheduled notification in case you don't want to use providers like Firebase. Quick pause, my name's Adrian and I'm doing videos around design and development. So if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe and let's just jump back into it. To get up and running, we'll just install the package. We'll run yarn add react native push notifications. Now I've got a project in here that I've been building called Bushfire Front. So I'm just gonna use that as our example for today. We're gonna also make sure that the library is linked. For newer libraries, you'll often find that auto linking happens for React Native 0.60 and above, but some older libraries haven't actually imported this yet. So we'll have to do this ourselves. Uh, on top of that, there's a manual step here required for iOS, which is making sure that the push notification iOS module is installed. And if you are on iOS, that's pretty simple. There are some steps here on making sure that you link it across and copy this into your app delegates.m file. But we're working on Android this time, so we'll just get it up and running on there. So to do that, we'll need to jump into Android build.gradle. Uh, so we'll jump in here and we'll go to Android and build.gradle here. Now, if we take a look for the versions here, we have to add a couple of extra lines here for Firebase and Google Play services. So let's put that in here and we can see that the default is just plus. So we'll just put that in here and in here. And if we take a look at the other settings are the compile SDK version. So we've already got that build tools version, which we already have here, uh, target SDK version, which we have here and supported lib version, which I don't believe we're using anymore. So we'll leave that out for now. For now. The next step will be to set up the Android manifest.xml and add the permissions in. So we'll jump in here and we'll browse to uh, the folder here and we'll copy over those permissions. Now in this case, uh, we don't need all of these permissions. We don't need the one here for um, Firebase. So we'll not copy that section in, but we'll copy the rest under application here and save that. So with those two things done, we only now make, need to make sure that the library has been linked properly. So we'll jump into the settings.gradle, which is over here. And we can see that the syntax is a little bit different. So we'll just use the syntax from the doco here. And finally, we have to create a file called colors.xml under this directory. So let's also do that. So that's under uh, res values and colors.xml and let's put that in. So that's looking good. Um, finally, we'll just need to make sure that the package is being imported and we can do that by having a look at our uh, main application.java. We can see here it is. We also need to make sure that it's being added, but with React Native auto linking, that should automatically happen by itself now. So if the library now installed, we can begin using it. The first thing we need to do is import it into our project. So in here, I've got a store and I'm going to import push notifications from its library name using the new syntax. We're going to run its initializer and this is called by running push notifications.configure with an object of the configuration you want to create. So in this case, we're going to import this into our constructor method, which will run every time our application launches our store. And in here, we don't need all this syntax. So I'm just going to remove most of this that we're not using and just keep the most basic stuff here, such as requesting permissions when the application needs to do a push notification, as well as things like badges and alerts. We're going to console out any notifications we have as well. Finally, we can actually call a push notification by running push notification.local notification and passing in an object. 
Now there's a lot of config that we can do in here, but we'll create a test function called test push. And for this function, we'll just call the basic parameters we need to create a push notification. So in this case, I would say it would just be a title and a message. Uh, the rest of this is probably not required at this stage. So if we apply this and click save, we can relaunch our application uh, and we can have a look at running the push notification by running this command. So I'm just going to open up DevTools in here and I'm going to run window.store.test push and run that across and that should create our first push notification. And there it is. If we click on it, it should console log out and here's all the information that's happening. So that's pretty cool. The other thing we can do is we can run some additional commands in here, such as if we create a test push notification, we can run a command to cancel it. So in this case, if we have a look at our documentation, to cancel a push notification, we just run a cancel command such as this one here, if we've set an ID, or we can cancel all push notifications by running, say, cancel all local notifications. So let's put that in here just so that we have another command and we'll call that test cancel. And in here, we've got a push notification and in our dev tools, we'll run, uh, well, we'll first refresh the application to so our store is in there. We'll do our test push and just make sure that pops up. So that's up there. And then we'll do window dot store dot cancel uh, test cancel. If we run that, that should cancel the notifications we have pending. And I believe that's been done. So they've disappeared now. Another thing we can do is create scheduled push notifications. So the command to do scheduled push notifications is up here. It's a local notification schedule. Let's copy this in and do a test schedule. And for this function, we'll call the command push notifications dot local notification schedule. Now uh, we're going to do this 60 seconds into the future. And let's apply this and refresh our application. And then in DevTools, oh, actually 10, 60 seconds might be a little bit too much. So we'll do 15 seconds. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll open up our dev tools here and we'll run window.store.testschedule and that'll run and create the notification. And now we can exit out of this application. And in the next five seconds, the push notifications should arrive and we should see it up here. So if we take a few seconds to have a look, it should pop up any second now. And there it is. So this is more or less the two ways you can use local notifications and this way you can schedule alarms or whatever you really want inside your React Native application without having to have a third party um, push notification service such as Firebase or OneSignal. Now, if we want this also to work on iOS, we need to follow the push notification iOS steps. And this is a separate library that's now been packaged with React Native community. This used to be part of React Native, but now you'll have to download this separately. So we'll simply run yarn add and we'll put in the store here. So let's put this in. This will install the dependencies required. We'll also have to make sure that the pods are installed. So we'll have to browse into iOS and run pod install. After that's done, if you're on a version less than 0.59, then you'll have to link it. But in this case, we're running a version above, so we don't have to actually do that. Finally, we'll have to update app delegate.m. And what we'll have to do is import the push notification service for iOS. So to do that, let's open up this file and add this line of code. We'll jump in here, go to iOS, find our package, and here is our folder. We'll add this import here and we'll also copy it across this script here and we'll place it down below. Uh, we can paste this probably nice and near the bottom. So that looks all good. And finally, if this isn't also at the top, we need to add this in as well. So let's add this here at the top of our file. So that looks good. Um, Finally, before the at end, we also have to add this in. 
So let's scroll down to the bottom here and just before the bottom, we'll add it here. So that looks good. We've got all the configurations set up now. I hope this video gave you a good idea of how to set up local push notifications for React Native. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.